Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Face to Face Conversations with God as we read the Word of God. We peruse the Word of God. We're eating the Word of God and it is manifesting in our life. It's manifesting the love of God. It's manifesting the truth of God. It's manifesting the compassion of God. It's manifesting the righteousness of God all in our lives. Oh my gosh, we have had a good time as we are reading the book of Psalms. We are already on Psalms number 105. So today we're going to be reading Psalms 105 through 108. And we might just go ahead and dip a little bit further on because it just gets so good as you begin to read the word of God. We are learning so many characteristics of God and we're learning through reading the Old Testament how God operates. So now you don't have to guess about does God love me? Will God forgive me? Will God cleanse me? Yes, yes, and yes. (laughs) So today uh, we're going to be reading Psalms 105, 106, 107, and 108. We're going to be reading from the Passion Translation. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you, to come together and read the word of God and get clarity. We thank you for questions that are being answered. We thank you, Lord God, for lives that are being restored. We thank you for healing of mind. We thank you for healing of soul that is happening as we read your word. We thank you for peace surpassing all understanding. We thank you, Lord God, that where there was once chaos, because we're reading your word, our world is becoming quieter. It's becoming more peaceful. We have storms, but we know that we're not alone. We have storms, but we know that we are not fighting any battles by ourselves. For you are our battle axe. You go before us. You make every crooked place straight. You level ground that needs to be leveled. You topple mountains in our life if they need to be toppled. You create streams. You create ways. You create paths. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we are now beginning to recognize the greatness of who you are. We are no longer coming uh, to, to you thinking, well, maybe God will answer me and maybe he won't. No, the word of God is showing us that when we come before you, you hear us and you answer our prayer. We thank you that we're beginning to understand that you are not a God who is on a time clock. But you live in eternity. We live in time. We have limitations. But when you send forth your word, it cuts through every limitation that exists in our life. My God, we thank you for your word, Lord God. We thank you for the seed of your word. We thank you that you're watering your word. We thank you that you are maturing your word in us. We thank you that you are increasing our capacity to receive your word. We thank you, Lord God, that you are enlarging yourself in us. Hallelujah. We thank you for that, Lord God. Glory to the Lamb of God. We bless your name, Holy One. Holy Spirit. We invite you into our lives. We thank you that you give us a teachable spirit. And we thank you that as we read your word, God, Holy Spirit begins to reveal the mysteries of your word. And we thank you for that, Father. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Well, it's your girl, Chantel, and we are getting ready to start our reading for the evening. We're going to be reading Psalms 105, 106, 107, and 108. We're going to be reading from the Passion Translation. So let's go ahead and journey in into the Word of God as you rest at the feet of your Father or if you're resting in his arms, wherever you position yourself, just know that you're you're being taught by the Father his word. It's not me that teaches the word. We're just reading together. But it's Holy Spirit that unveils all the mysteries of the word of God. All right? So we're going to go ahead and get started. 
Psalms 105, Passion Translation. God's wonderful works. I love this. He says, go ahead and give God thanks for all the glorious things he's done. Go ahead and worship him. Yeah, you go ahead and worship him. Tell everyone about his wonders. Let's sing his praises, sing and put all of his miracles to music. My God, have you ever just written down all the things that God has done in your life? And then while you're in your devotion, you put that to music, it will wipe you out. <laughs> it will wipe you out. Hey, Paula, how are you doing, sis? It will wipe you out when you begin to sing of all of the beautiful things that God has done for you. All the miracles, all the healings. My God, the peace that he gives you. My God. My God. He says, uh, verse three, shine and make your joyful boast in him, you lovers of God. Let's be happy and keep rejoicing no matter what. Seek more of his strength. Seek more of him. <gasps> I think that might be a problem that we're having. We are seeking our own strength. <laughs> but we can't live this life in our own strength. So the Bible in verse four is telling us a key. Seek more of his strength. Seek the might of God. The might of God is a spirit. The might of God is strength. Seek the might of God. Seek more of him. Let's always be seeking the light of his face. Don't ever forget his miracles or his marvels. Hold to your heart every judgment he has decreed. For you are his servants, the true seed of Abraham, and you are the chosen ones, Jacob's sons. For he is the Lord our God, and, he is, and his wise authority can be seen in all he does. For though a thousand generations may pass away, his word is still true. He is still true to his word. Even when you and I pass away, if Christ has not come back for the church yet, his word is still true. You say, well, wait a minute. How? Yeah, okay. My grandfather passed away, but the word is still true. I'm 55 years old. My grandfather passed when he was 81. The word of God is still true. It's still progressing. It's still manifesting. My God. So it doesn't matter that this generation passes. Two, three, four generations pass. The word of God is still true. It's the same word of God that was written way back over 2,000 years ago. It still stands true now. My God. He kept every promise he made to Abraham and Isaac. And he will keep every promise that he has made to you. His promises have become an everlasting covenant to Jacob. As a decree to Jacob. God's covenants become a decree. My God. He said to them, I will give you all the land of Canaan as your inheritance. The very, though they were few in number when God gave them that promise and they were all foreigners to that land, they were wandering from one land to another, from one kingdom to another. Yet God would not permit anyone to touch them. My God, punishing even kings who came against them. He said to them, don't you dare lay a hand on my anointed ones and do not don't and don't do a thing to hurt my prophets. So God decreed a famine upon Canaan land, cutting off their food supply. See, God will go to whatever lengths is necessary to bring forth his promise that he has said for you or for your family line. Come on. But he had already sent a man ahead of his people to Egypt. It was Joseph who was once sold as a slave. Remember, we read about that in Genesis. His feet were bruised by strong shackles and his soul was held by iron. Remember, he got put in prison. God's promise to Joseph purged his character 
<gasps> you mean to tell me that God will decree a thing in your life, <laughs> let you go through some avenues that seem like it just doesn't seem you're walking in the path of God and you don't realize that what God is doing is he's actually purging your character. He's purging my character so that we can stand under the weight of the promise. And when I mean weight, I mean the, the heaviness, the weight of the promise, because when it manifests, there's a heaviness to it, not in a bad way, but there's a responsibility that comes with it. My God, until it was time for his dreams to come true. So let me read that full verse without breaking it up. God's promise to Joseph purged his character until it was time for his dreams to come true. Don't come out of the hand of God. Keep walking with him. Even though it feels like you're in a prison. It feels like uh, uh, iron is all around you. You can't move. You're all caged in. God, let God purge your character. All right? So that when your dreams come through, come true, you don't have to uh, uh, worry about being shamed before people, being exposed before people. Let God purge your character. Holy Spirit, come in and purge our character. Hallelujah. So as the promises of God manifest, we are whole. W-H-O-L-E, whole. Our soul is whole. Thank you, Lord God. Eventually, the king of Egypt sent for him, setting him free at last. The word of God is sending for you and it's going to set you free. Then Joseph was put in charge of everything under the king. He became the master of the palace over all the royal possessions. Pharaoh gave him authority over all the princes of the land. And Joseph became the teacher of wisdom to the king's advisors. Then Jacob, with all of Joseph's family, came to Canaan. I'm sorry, came from Canaan to Egypt and settled in Goshen. Verse 24, God made them very fruitful and they multiplied incredibly until they were great in number. They were greater in number than those who had ruled them. God turned their hearts to hate this, his people and to deal treacher, treacherously with his servants. So you mean to tell me you're a servant of God, you're a child of God, you're an ambassador of God, and he will cause people around you not to like you, not to want to deal with you, to... Uh, um, to become uh, angry with you. <laughs> God allowed this to happen. God allowed this to happen because he knew what he was getting ready to do with the children of Israel. God allows some things to happen in your life because he knows what he's getting ready to do with you. He said, God turned their hearts to hate his people and to deal treacherously with his servant. But he sent them his faithful servant, Moses, the deliverer, and chose Aaron to accompany him. Their command brought down signs and wonders, working miracles in Egypt. By God's direction, they spoke and released a plague of thick darkness over the land. God turned their rivers to blood, causing every fish to die. And the judgment plague of frogs came in, in, in enormous numbers, swarming everywhere, even into Pharaoh's bedroom. God spoke and another plague was released. Massive swarms of flies, vast clouds of insects covered the land. Verse 32, God rained down hail and flaming fire upon Egypt. Their gardens and vines were all destroyed shattering trees into splinters throughout the territory. God spoke and devouring herds of locusts swept over the land, picking the ground clean of vegetation and crops. Then God struck down their firstborn sons, the pride and joy of every Egyptian family. 
At last, God freed all the Hebrews from their slavery and sent them away laden with the silver and gold of Egypt. And not even one was feeble on their way out. Do you hear what God is saying? When he begins to bring you out, the very people that have been trying to hold you down, dealing, you, dealing with you treacherously because God allowed it. They're the very same people that will bless you, that will help promote you. Hallelujah. And listen what else God said. There was not a feeble one amongst them. What does that mean? There was not one that was sick. There was not one that even though they were old in age, couldn't move, couldn't walk, their bones were healthy. The morrow, he restored their youth. God caused them to be able to walk. My God, there was not a feeble one amongst them. Jesus. So for all of you all that are like me, that are in your 50s and your bones are starting to feel a little old and raggedy, God, we come before you and we thank you that there will not be a feeble one amongst us. We thank you that as seniors, we still get out and exercise. We thank you that as seniors, our bodies are strong. We thank you that as seniors, we run like a gazelle. We have strength. We have energy. We have stamina to speak the word, to teach the word, to impart the word. Come on. There shall not be a feeble one amongst us, no matter how old you are. You who watch this, ask Holy Spirit to strengthen your body. That's what he did for the children of Israel so he can do it for you and I. And I'm a living witness. He does it. I just came in today from out riding my bicycle. Come on, ask God to renew your body. I mean, go down to the cartilage level. Lord, strengthen my cartilage. Strengthen the marrow in my bones. Strengthen the joints. Strengthen uh, uh, the kneecaps. Strengthen my ankles. Strengthen my calves. Strengthen my legs. Strengthen my muscles. Strengthen my eyes. Strengthen my hands. Give me a new pep in my step. <laughs> He'll do it for you. Just because you're getting older doesn't mean you have to crumble up. Said God said there was not a feeble one amongst them. So for all, uh, what is it, 4,400 of you all that watch, there will not be a feeble one amongst us. My God from Zion, glory to the Lamb of God. Now do you see why you want to read the word? Because you can pick it up and you're like, I don't have to be a weak. I can walk in the strength and the might of God, no matter what age I am. Glory to God. And verse 38, he says, Egypt was relieved at their exodus, ready to see them go. <laughs> they were like, good riddance, get out of here, here and take. And look, when God sent them out, he sent them out with all kinds of treasures. They didn't leave empty handed. <laughs> their enemies blessed them. My God, for the terror of the Lord. Uh, I'm sorry, let me reread that. Egypt was relieved at their exodus ready to see them go for the terror of the Lord of the Hebrews had fallen upon them. God spread out a cloud of shade as they moved ahead and a cloud of fire to light up their night. See, God is letting you know, I'm with you in the day and I'm with you at night. You are never ever alone. God is always with you, guiding your path, no matter what time of day it is. Whether it's a season of day for you or whether it's a season of night, whether it's a physical day for you or whether it's physically night, God is always there walking with you, guiding you. My God, verse 40, Moses prayed and God brought them quail to eat. God provides. He satisfied them with heaven's bread falling from the sky. He broke open the boulders and the waters poured out like a river in the desert. God will provide streams of water for you. Are you dry? Ask God to provide a stream of water coming from the throne of God. God, hallelujah, cause your people to be nourished with your word, nourished with your presence. Let the streams and rivers of God flow, the pure stream of God, so that your people are not dry. My God. 
He broke open the boulder and the waters poured out like a river in the desert. For God could never forget his holy promise to his servant Abraham. So God brought out his chosen ones with singing. See why it's important to sing? God wants you to sing. Come on. With a joyful shout, they were set free. He gave them lands and nations just like he promised. Fruitful lands of the crops they had never planted were now theirs. All this was done for them so that they would be faithful to keep the ways of God, obeying his laws and following his truths. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When God does a thing in your life, when God does a miracle in your life, he wants you to always be faithful and to keep his ways and obey his laws and follow his truth, all right? So now let's go to Psalms 106, where we're gonna talk about how good God is. My God. When I read this one, this was our description for today's reading. When I read this one, I was like, how many people feel it is difficult to pray to please God? Oh, I don't think I can please God. I've done so many things wrong and my life just hasn't been perfect. And that is, don't think I can please God. Well, I'm going to show you something in Psalms 106. That's going to take that pressure off of your shoulders. You ready? All right, here we go. Psalms 106 and one. You ready? You ready? Cause it's in the first verse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everyone. Thank God for he is good and easy to please. Stop. What? <laughs> he is good and easy to please. It's not hard to please God. My God, your tender love for us, Lord, continues on forever. We could ever, who could ever fully describe your glorious miracles? And I feel like Holy Spirit wants me to just wait just a minute and, and rest on that because so many people think that God is harsh and he's not, he's not harsh. He is just, he is faithful, he is holy, he is righteous, he is pure. But he's not harsh. His judgments are pure. Hallelujah. God is not harsh. He loves you so much. His love towards you is tender. My God, who could ever fully describe your glorious miracles? Yahweh, who could ever praise you enough? The happiest ones on the earth is the one who keeps your word and clings to righteousness every moment every moment cling to righteousness every moment cling to the word of god my god so remember me lord as you take joy in your people and when you come to bring the blessing blessings of salvation don't forget me let me share in the wealth and the beauty of all your lovers rejoice with your nation and all their joys and let me share in the glory you give to your chosen ones. Woo! Woo! Verse six, we have all sinned so much, just like our fathers. Guilty is written over our lives. Our fathers who were delivered from Egypt didn't fully understand your wonders and they took you for granted. Oh God, help us not to take you for granted. Help us to fully understand your wonders. Hallelujah. Over and over, you showed them such tender love and mercy, yet they were barely beyond the Red Sea when they rebelled against you. Oh God, nonetheless, you saved them uh, more than once so they would know how powerful you are showing them the honor of your name 
You roared over the waters of the Red Sea, making a dry path for your people to cross through. You freed them from strong power. God will free you from every power that is oppressing you. He says you freed them from the strong power of those who oppressed them and rescued them from bondage. Then the waters rushed over the enemies and drowned them all. Not one survived. Seeing this, the people believed your words and they all broke out with songs of praise. Yet, how quickly they forgot your miracles of power. Holy Spirit, help us not to forget the miracles of power that God manifests in our lives daily. They wouldn't wait for you to act when they were hungry, my God, but demanded you satisfy their cravings and give them food. They tested you to the breaking point. So you gave them what they wanted to eat, but their soul starved away to nothing. Holy Spirit, teach us how not to be people that want just the hand of God, that want just the gifts of God, that are always asking, 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 but our soul is dry and parched. Help us to be a people, Holy Spirit, that seek after the face of God, that seek after the presence of God, that seek after the wholeness of our soul. My God, we don't want to starve away and become nothing. Dry, dead man's bones, walking around. Jesus, a sepulcher. We don't want to become a grave where there's nothing but death in us. We want to be alive in you, Lord God. Verse 16, Psalms 106 and verse 16. They became envious of Moses and Aaron, your holy ones. Jesus. Teach us not to be envious, Lord God, of what you're doing through others. You split open the earth and it swallowed up Dathan and Abram along with their followers. Fire fell from heaven and burnt up all the bands of rebels, turning them to ashes. Verse 19, they made an idol of a calf at Sinai and bowed to worship their man-made statues, preferring the image of a grass-eating ox to the presence of the glory-filled God. What idol? Are you preferring over God? That thing right there will make you stop and go, Jesus, what idols do I have before you? Is it the idol of money, of mammon? Is it the idol of performance? Is it the idol of uh, uh, applause from people? <laughs> what is your idol that you have put before God? Jesus. They made a handmade calf and wanted the calf more than they wanted the presence of God. Holy Spirit, cause us to seek after God and God alone. My God. Verse 21. They totally forgot it was you who saved them by the wonders and awesome miracles you worked in Egypt. We totally forget that it's God that delivered us out of whatever bondages we were in. Somewhere along the way, we think we did it. <laughs> oh my God, have mercy upon us. Verse 23, so you were fed up and decided to destroy them. But Moses, your chosen leader, stood in the gap between you and the people and made intercession on their behalf to turn away your wrath from killing them all. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that that is what you did for us. You are the atonement for all of us. Moses was just an example of what Jesus did for us. Jesus intercedes for us. Hallelujah. Jesus was the scapegoat. Jesus was the lamb. Hallelujah. That was slain. Hallelujah, so that the wrath of God didn't have to come down on us. So that when God looks at us, he doesn't see the sin. He sees the blood of Jesus. My God. 
my God. Yet they still didn't believe your words and they despised the land of delight you gave them. Ha, ah, Jesus. Verse 25, they grumbled and found fault with everything and closed their hearts to your voice. Oh God, we don't want to close our heart to your voice. We don't want to close our heart to your word. We don't want to close our heart to your truth. So you gave up and swore to them that they would all die in the desert. And as you scattered their children to the distant lands to die as exiles, then our fathers joined the worshipers of false gods named the Lord of the pit. Now, I did some research on this Lord of the pit. My God. Let me tell y'all about this Lord of the pit. It's a Baal God. And uh, the Lord of the pit, a Moabite God, it is a sensual, indulgent, indulgence, flagrant sin. Well, we see that happening in our world now. The flagrance of sin. Just, I'm going to flaunt it. I don't care how you feel about it. I can do what I want. Just flagrant indulgence. In the Jewish Encyclopedia... The worship of this idol constituted in exposing the part of the body which all persons usually take my utmost care to conceal. So don't we see that God exposing himself now? Women walking around with very little clothes on, exposing as much of their body as they can possibly get away with. Men walking around exposing their body with as much as they can possibly get away with. The Lord of the pit, that God is being, it's just here now exposing itself. Jesus. My God. It's a sensual, flagrant, indulgent God. We see it all in our world. My God. So instead of worshiping God, people want to worship the Lord of the pit. Jesus, have mercy on us. We're in Psalms 106 and we're in verse 28. So I'm going to read it again. Then our fathers joined the worshipers of, of the false God named Lord of the pit. You can look it up, look it up in the Jewish encyclopedia. When you see these different um, uh, uh, things being exposed in the Bible, look them up. They're not just written there just to be written there. You need to know what that sin was so that you don't operate in that. All right. Okay. They even ate the sacrifices offered to the dead. My God from Zion. All they did made you burn with anger. It made you so angry that a plague broke out among them. It continued until Phineas intervened and executed the guilty for causing judgment to fall upon them. Because of the deeds of the righteous, Phineas will be remembered forever. Verse 32. Your people also provoked you to wrath at the stream called strife. What? <laughs> a stream called strife. Not just one or two strife. A stream means it's continually flowing. Is strife all in your life? Do you have a stream of strife flowing? That's because you have provoked God to anger. But you can get rid of that stream. <laughs> it's a rebellion against God your people also provoke you to wrath at the stream called strife that is where Moses, Moses got into trouble because the people rebelled against you Moses exploded in anger and spoke to them out of his bitterness Strife comes in where bitterness is alive in our life. If there's always strife in your life, 
know that the spirit of bitterness is right there with it. You're drinking bitterness. So now Holy Spirit, ask Holy Spirit to show you where this bitterness is in your life. Where did it come in? When did it start? And begin to allow Holy Spirit to get that bitterness out of your soul because you're drinking it every day. You're drinking from that stream. That thing is serious. Do you know because of bitterness, because Moses spoke out in bitterness, he did not get to enter into the promised land. You're wondering why the promises of God are not coming to pass. Is there bitterness coming out of your mouth? It just, it, it comes out of every part of your body, bitterness. It's in your bones your joints. Some of you have ailments. Doctors don't even know what it is. It could be bitterness. Ask Holy Spirit to search you. If this is really, if it's causing you to get mad, then you know you are operating in this. You're like, hey, who does she think she is? That ain't, that's not what I, well, come on, calm back down, calm back down, calm back down. Let Holy Spirit deal with you because it's pricking you. And Holy Spirit is like, yeah, that's what I want to deal with right now. Let's deal with that. So let him come in and ask him to come in and show you where bitterness is operating in your life. And then ask him to heal your soul of all bitterness. And that's how you shut the door so that the enemy of your soul doesn't have a foothold in your life. All right? Okay. Verse 34, neither did our fathers destroy the enemies in the land as you commanded them. Now, for those of you that are ready to click off, wait a minute. It's up to you to destroy the enemies in the land. It's up to you to destroy whatever is operating inside of you. It's not up to the pastor. It's not up to the apostle. It's not up to the prophet or the evangelist or the prayer warrior or the intercessor. It's up to you, each individual. You have to allow Holy Spirit to come in and search your life. Reveal to you what he needs to work on and you have to open up your mouth and confess and get all that stuff up out of you. Holy Spirit will walk you through it. Holy Spirit will teach you how to do it. All right. So because they didn't get all the, they didn't destroy all the enemies. Look what happens. He said, neither did our fathers destroy the enemies in the land as you commanded, but they mingled themselves <laughs> with their enemies and learn to copy their works of darkness. If you don't destroy that enemy in your life, it will become a part of your character. It will become a part of your personality. It will become a part of your whole makeup. Yeah. Didn't know that, did you? Yep. And you'll be operating in all of that stuff. My God. That's some, that's some serious stuff. Hold on, guys. Sorry about that. That's some serious stuff. All right. But they mingled themselves with their enemies and learned to copy their works of darkness. They began to serve their gods and bow before their idols. All of this led them away from you and brought, brought about their downfall. Now, look, this is something else that we need to understand. Um... This is something else that we need to understand. It is easier for people out in the world to bring you into their idols, into their gods, into their way of thinking than it is for you to bring them into the, the, the uh, word of God. But once you get grounded, once you get full and once your spirit is cleansed and once your spirit is made whole, you can then go out and tread. You can go out and you can bring people in and you can snatch them. You can snatch them out of darkness. You can snatch them out of bondage. Bondage. You can snatch them out of the pits that they're in. But let God uh, finish the work in you before you go out and try to yank somebody else in. All right? Okay? Verse 37. They even sacrificed their little children to the demon spirits shedding the innocent blood of their sons and daughters. 
These, these dark practices greatly defiled the land and their own souls through the murder and bloodshed of their own babies. Jesus. This sin, their sins made them spiritual adulterers before you. This is why you were furious as your anger burned hot against them. You couldn't even stand to look at your very own people any longer. So you turned them over to the crushing hands of other nations and those who hated them became tyrants over them. Oppressive enemies subdued them, ruling over them with their tyranny. Many times you would have come to rescue them but they continued in their rebellious ways, choosing to ignore your warnings. Oh God, help us not to unpurposely ignore your warnings. Then they sank lower and lower, destroyed by their depravity. Yet, even so, you waited and waited, watching to see if they would turn and cry out to you for a father's help. You see how God is? You see, he's not harsh. The only reason why God would ever turn away from us is because we turn away from him. But even in his turning, he's still yet saying, just call out to me. Just call out to me. I want to deliver you. I want to heal you. I want to set you free. I want you to walk in peace. I want you to walk uh, with, with pure streams flowing into your life. Come on. All right? And then when you heard their cry, you relented and you remembered your covenant and you turned your heart toward them again, according to your abundant, overflowing and limitless love. God, we thank you that your love is overflowing. It's abundant. It's limitless. Then you caused even their oppressors to pity them and to show them compassion. Do it again. Lord, save us, O oh Lord our God. Gather us from our exile and unite us together so that we will give our great and joyous thanks to you again and bring glory by our praises. Blessed be our Lord God forever and ever. And let everyone everywhere say hallelujah and amen. Faithful is our King. God, we thank you for your word. Hallelujah. Now we're going to hear what David had to write about God's constant love. See, you didn't realize that God's love towards you is constant. It is so, when you really take note and really watch and um, purposely try to see how God is continuously showering you with love, you can't help but see he's not harsh. He's not harsh at all. His love is tender towards you, all right? So now we're in Psalms 105, it's book five, and uh, it says this is the Deuteronomy Psalms, Psalms of praise and the word, uh, and the word, God's constant love. Let me reread that. <laughs> Psalms of praise and the word, God's constant love. I was trying to add too many inflections there. All right. Psalms 107 from the Passion Translation. Let everyone give all their praise and thanks to the Lord. Here's why. He's better than anyone could ever imagine. Yes, he's always loving and kind and his faithful love never ends. God's love towards you and I never ends. So go ahead, let everyone know it. Tell the world how he broke through and delivered you from the power of darkness. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, and delivered you from the power of darkness and has gathered us together from all over the world. See, God is gathering us from all over the world and he's letting us know how much he loves us. He has set us free to be his very own. We're in Psalms 107 and we're at verse four. Some of us once wandered in the wilderness like desert nomads with no true direction 
or dwelling place. Oh God, starving, thirsting, staggering. We became desperate and filled with despair. Have you ever felt like that, that you're wandering, you're in the wilderness, there's no place for you to rest, you, you don't have a place where you can be uh, nourished, you feel like you're, you're starving, your soul is thirsting, you're staggering, saying, God, where are you? And you become desperate, and you're filled with despair. Well, listen what you have to do. Then we cried out, Lord, help us, rescue us. And what did he do? He did it. God will rescue you every time. You want to see that in the New Testament? Well, you remember when Jesus was walking on the water and Peter got out of the boat and he began to walk on the water and Peter began to put his eyes, he took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to look at all the waves and hear the wind and he began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And what happened? Jesus did. So the Old Testament and the New Testament are telling us no matter what we go through, no matter if we feel like we're sinking under the water or if we're in a dry desert place, God is saying, call out to me and I'll rescue you. Call out to me and I'll pour into you so that you won't have to be in a dry place. All right. He led us right into a place of safety and abundance, a suitable city to dwell in. So lift your hands and thank God for his marvelous kindness, for all his miracles of mercy for those he loves, how he satisfies the soul of the thirsty ones. If you're thirsty, God will satisfy you. And he fills the hungry with all that is good. Are you hungry? God will satisfy that hunger. Some of us once sat in darkness, living in dark shadows of death. We were prisoners to our own pain, chained to our regrets. For we rebelled against God's word and rejected the wise counsel of God most high. So he humbled us through our circumstances. Set, I'm sorry, he humbled us through our circumstances, watching us as we stumbled with no one there to pick us back up. Our own pain became our punishment. Then we cried out, Lord, help us, rescue us. And what did he do? He did it. He will rescue us. You don't have to sit there and wallow in regret. What happened in the past happened in the past. You can't change it. You can't go back and redo it. It's in the past. Let God heal you of all of those regrets. And he will show you, I got so much more for you. Don't worry about what happened in the past. That's covered. Come on and walk with me. Don't stay there. My God. His light broke through and the dark, uh, his light broke through the darkness and he led us out in freedom from death's dark shadow and snapped every one of our chains. Now, do you hear that? Chains are usually made with iron. <laughs> iron cannot be snapped by the human man. You see the power and strength of God? He snaps the chains huh, of death off of us. My God, he snaps the chains of darkness. He snaps the iron bars. My God, hallelujah. I love that Lord God. Verse 15. So lift up your hands and give thanks to God for his marvelous kindness and for his miracles of mercy for those he loves. For he smashed through the heavy prison doors. Do you have prison doors that feel like you are locked in? God smashes through the prison doors and he shattered the steel bars that held us back just to set us free. Oh God, some of us were such fools bringing on ourselves sorrow and suffering all because of our sins. Sick and feeble, unable to stand the sight of food, who drew near to the gates of death. Verse 19, then we cried out, Lord help us, rescue us. And he did. God spoke the words, be healed. 
and we were healed, delivered from death's door. So lift up your hands, give thanks to God for his marvelous kindness and his miracles of mercy for those he loves. Verse 22, bring your praise as an offering and your thanks as a sacrifice as you sing your story of miracles with a joyful sound song. So now what I want you to do, hallelujah, begin to sing of all of the things that God has done for you. Sing of the miracles that God has done for you. Sing about the breakthroughs that God has done for you. Sing about the deliverances that God has done for you. Come on, sing about it. Verse 23, some of us set sail upon the sea to faraway ports, transporting our goods from the ship to the shore. We were witnesses of God's power out in the ocean deep. We saw breathtaking wonders upon the high seas. When God, smoke, when God spoke, he stirred up a storm, lifting the high waves with hurricane winds. Ships were tossed by swelling seas, rising to the sky, then dropped down to the depths, reeling like drunkards, spinning like tops. Everyone at their wits end until even sailors despaired of life, uh, crying in terror. Verse 28. Then we cried out, Lord, help us, rescue us. And he did. God stilled the storm, calmed the waves. He hushed the hurricane winds to only a whisper. We were so relieved, so glad as he guided us safely to harbor in the quiet heaven, haven. So lift up your hands and give thanks to God for his marvelous kindness and for his miracles of mercy for those he loves. Verse 32, let's exalt him on high and lift up our praises in public. Let all the people and the leaders of the nation know how great and wonderful is Yahweh our God. Whenever he chooses, he can dry up a river and he can turn the land into desert or he can take a fruitful land and make it into a swamp, salt water swamp all because of the wickedness of those who dwell there. But he also can turn a barren wilderness into an oasis of water. He can make springs flow into desert lands and turn them into fertile valleys so that cities spring up and he gives it to all those who are hungry. They can plant their fields and vineyards there and reap a bumper crop and gather a fruitful harvest. God will bless them and cause them to multiply and prosper, but others will become poor, humbled because of their oppression, tyranny, and sorrows. For God pours contempt upon the arrogant abuse of power. <gasps> what? Verse 40, for God pours contempt upon the arrogant abuse of power heaping scorn upon their princes and making them wander among the ruins. But he raises up the poor and lowly with his favor, giving them a safe place to live where no one can touch them. God will grant them a large family and bless them. The lovers of God will rejoice when they see this. Good men are glad when the evil ones are silenced. If you are truly wise, you'll learn from what I told you. It's time for you to consider these profound lessons of God's great love and mercy. Holy Spirit, let us consider these profound lessons that you are teaching us through the book of Psalms. My God. And our last Psalm for the night, Psalms 108, a prayer for God's help. It's a psalm by King David. My heart, O oh God, is quiet and confident all because of you. Are you lacking confidence? Then get into the presence of God and you will become confident. You will walk with such peace. You will walk in such confidence knowing that you are not walking this road alone that God is there to guide you. Now I can sing my song 
with the passionate praises. Awake, O my soul, with the music of his splendor. Arise, my soul, and sing praises. I will awaken the dawn with my worship, greeting the daybreak with the songs of light. Whenever, wherever I go, I will thank you. All the nations will hear my praise songs to you. Your love is so extravagant. It reaches higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness is so astonishing. It stretches to the skies. Oh God, how we love you for your word. My God, my God. I want to come back and just read this over and over again because this is blessing me. My God. Lord, God, be exalted as you soar through the heavens. May your shining glory be seen high above all the earth. Come to your beloved ones and gently draw us out. Holy Spirit, gently draw us into the love of God. Hallelujah. Answer our prayers for your saving help. Come with your might and strength for we need you, Lord. Verse 7. Then I heard the Lord speak in his holy splendor from his sanctuary. I heard the Lord promise in my triumph, I will be the one to measure out the portion of my inheritance to my people. And I will secure the land as I promise you. Shechem, Sakah, Gilead, Manasseh, they are all still mine, he says. Judah will continue to produce kings and lawgivers. And Ephraim will produce great warriors. Moab will become my lowly servant. Edom will, like, will likewise serve my purposes. I will lift up a shout of victory over the land of Philistia. But... Who will bring my triumph into Edom's fortresses? Lord, have you really rejected us, refusing to fight our battles? Give us a father's help when we face our enemies, for to trust in any man is an empty hope. With God's help, we will prevail with might and power, and with God's help, we will trample down every foe it is with god's help we destroy the enemies in our life it is with god's help we destroy every obstacle that comes hallelujah to hinder our walk with god we will defeat every enemy in our generation in our bloodline we walk with victory and god teaches us how to triumph my god we bless your name my God, let me just go ahead and read Psalms 109. God, it's time for vengeance. Hallelujah. For some of you all thinking, oh God, are you going to come in and help me? Are you going to come in and deliver me? Listen to what Psalms 109 is going to teach us about vengeance. God, of all my praises, don't stand silently by, aloof to my pain, while the wicked slander me with their lies. Even right in front of my face, they lie through their teeth. I've done nothing to them, but they still surround me with their venomous words and hatred and vitriol. Though I love them, they stand accusing me like Satan. For whatever I've done, I will pray until I become prayer itself. Pray until you become prayer. My God. Jesus, my God, hallelujah. I will pray until I become prayer itself. Holy Spirit, help us to understand the gravity, the weight of this verse. Help us to pray until we become prayer itself. Oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That right there will transform our entire life. Pray until we become prayer itself. Woo, Jesus. I don't even want to push past that. 
Pray until you become prayer. Pray until you you are just prayer. Your whole life is prayer. Everything about you is prayer. You're just engulfed in the spirit of God. My God, they continually repay me with evil when I show them good. They give me hatred when I show them love. Show him how it feels. Let accusing liars be raised up against him like Satan himself standing right next to him. And let him be declared guilty by a wicked judge. May even his prayers be seen as sinful. Shorten his life and let another replace him. My God, listen to what David said. My God, make his wife a widow and his children orphans. Let them wander as beggars in the street, like homeless vagabonds evicted from their ruins. Let the creditor seize his entire estate and strangers like vultures take all that's left. Let no one be kind to him, showing pity to his fatherless children. May all his posterity die with him, cut down his family tree, and may all the sins of his ancestors be recorded, remembered before you forever. Cut off even the memory of his family from the face of the earth because no one, uh, never, because he never once showed love or kindness to others, but persecuted the poor and the brokenhearted and the afflicted ones, even putting them to death. Since he enjoyed cursing them, Jesus, may all the curses now come raining back on him until it overwhelms him with misfortune. My God, since he refuses to bless others, God withhold every single blessing from him. Bitterness, such vile vindictiveness was upon everything he did. Cursing was his lifestyle, his lifestyle. So smother him now with his own curses as he just as his just reward. This will be the Lord's punishment upon him and all my lying accusers who speak evil against me. But now, O oh Yahweh, God, make yourself real to me like you promised me you would. Because of your constant love and heart-melting kindness, come be my hero and deliver me. I'm so broken, needy, and hurting. My heart is pierced through and I'm so wounded. I'm slipping back. I'm slipping down a dark slope, shaken to the core and helpless. All my fasting has left me so weak I can hardly stand. Now I'm shriveled up, nothing but skin and bones. I'm the example of failure and shame to all who see me. They just walk by me shaking their heads. You have helped, you have helped me, O oh Lord God. You have to help me, O oh Lord God. My true hero, come to my rescue and save me. For you are a love, for you are loving and kind. Then everyone will know that you have won my victory. And they will all say, the Lord, you have finished it. So let them curse me if they want, but I know you will bless me. All their efforts to destroy me will fail, but I will succeed and be glad. So let my Satan-like accusers fall. Make them look ridiculous if they even try to come against me. Clothe them with the robe of guilty, shame from this day on. But I will give my thanks to you over and over and everyone will hear my lavish praises. For you stand right next to the broken ones as their saving hero to rescue them from all their accusers. Oh my God, do you hear what David is saying? He's recognizing that vengeance belongs to God. And he's saying, God, come in and be, be my vindicator. When people spew lies, don't you go try to get vengeance. You just bless God. You just honor God. You just bring it before God and let God be the one that uh, uh, heals, huh, 
of all the situation and corrects the wrongs. My God, my God, Jesus, we thank you. Well, we read up to Psalms 109. Uh, I wasn't going to go that far, but I guess Holy Spirit wanted me to read that. So, uh, my God, we thank you all for coming on. We read Psalms 105, 06, 07, 08, and 09. We read five Psalms today. So, thank you all for coming on. May the Lord continue to expand his word in you may holy spirit continue to reveal the truth of the word and may we all become prayer until we are prayer itself may we all become prayer until we are prayer itself i love you all we'll be back on here reading psalms 110 111 and 112 um, all right. So that, because I went into the next series of, of Psalms, so I'm only going to read the three. I love you all. And we will be back on here, finishing up, uh, more of the book of Psalms. Have a wonderful day, morning, evening. Thank you so much for all you all who are liking and following the page. I pray my prayer for you is that you don't only hear the word of God being read, but you apply it to your life. And when Holy Spirit causes scriptures to jump out at you, just like when I'm reading certain scriptures just jump out and, and I just breathe them in. When I'm reading and studying, scriptures jump out at me. When I'm reading and reading them here live, scriptures jump out at me. So I know that that's things that Holy Spirit is dealing with, not only in your life, but in my life. I thank you all for joining me. We'll be back on here again, reading the word of God. Don't forget to hit the share button. Share, 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 because everybody needs to hear the truth of the word of God. All right. I love you. We'll be back on later. Bye-bye.